Sacred Day, Beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Monday, the 8th of April. Today we are celebrating the Feast of the Annunciation of the Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is transferred from March 25th because it was during Holy Week. If you look at your calendar, you'll recognize that March 25th is nine months before December 25th, the Feast of the Birth of Our Lord. Reading from For All the Saints, the story of the Annunciation is told by St. Luke, who used it to introduce some major themes in his version of the Gospel. The angel Gabriel visited Mary, greeting her as the one who was favored by God to be the mother of Jesus, the Son of the Most High. It was not Mary's virtues or merit that won her this favor. It was simply that God remembered to be gracious and bestowed such a gift of power on Mary so that the whole human race might know the still greater gift of salvation. Thus empowered, Mary was able to respond, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. By the grace of God which filled her, she was able to practice a graciousness of her own towards God, for it gave her a unique freedom to make God's will the very thing that she herself willed. In this gracious response to God's gift, Mary may be seen as a forerunner of Christ himself. For her consent to God's saving purpose foreshadowed her son's consent to the fulfillment of that purpose, even at the cost of his own life. To the Annunciation, Mary responded, Be it unto me according to your word. In a similar way, on the eve of his passion, Jesus prayed to God, Not my will, but yours be done. The Feast of the Annunciation, which celebrates the conception of Jesus, comes to full term on Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter when we celebrate the birth of the new creation in his paschal victory. All of God's grace is imparted to our lives so that we might share in this one mystery, not all at once, but through the changes and chances of our daily living. The life of grace often leaves us puzzling as the message of the angel puzzled Mary, and Scripture suggests that Mary herself did not understand the mystery she had borne until her son was raised from the dead. Her whole life was a discipline in grace for the revelation of glory. And so it may be for all who by baptism and the Eucharist bear Christ in their own lives. End quote. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed, O come, let us worship. I'll chant the Christ our Passover today and encourage you to hum along and listen to this beautiful collection of verses from Romans and 1 Corinthians. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. 
for as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Psalm 98. Mary, the mother of Jesus, would have known Psalm 98. In fact, it is quoted, verse 1 is quoted in Luke chapter 1, verse 51, as part of the Magnificat, Mary's song of praise. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Let us pray. Lord God, we see your righteous rule in all your works, and we join our voices with the song of your whole creation in praising you, in and through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Isaiah chapter 52, verses 7 through 12. Remember, this passage is spoken of old to the people of Israel, yet it is read as we remember the Annunciation of the Lord to Mary because the Lord was announcing good news to her. Verse 7 to 12. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, Depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, come out from it and be pure, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. But you will not leave in haste or go in flight, for the Lord will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we move ahead into the Old Testament, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 to 10. This concerns the incarnation of our Lord, Jesus made like his siblings. It is not to angels that God has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything under his feet. In putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet, at present, we do not see everything subject to him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that, by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I like this little note um, concerning Jesus' perfection through suffering. This doesn't mean that Jesus was imperfect before his suffering, because that's not what we're talking about. Perfect here, made perfect, means made complete. 
in purpose, made complete. So through his suffering, he was made the complete offering, the full offering for humanity. Here's this little note from the Life Application Bible. How was Jesus made perfect through suffering? Jesus' suffering made him a perfect leader or pioneer of our salvation. Jesus did not need to suffer for his own salvation because he was God in human form. His perfect obedience, which led him down the road of suffering, demonstrates that he was the complete sacrifice for us. Parenthetical note, I can say he was the perfect sacrifice for us, complete. Through suffering, Jesus completed the work necessary for our own salvation. Our suffering can make us more sensitive servants of God. People who have known pain are able to reach out with compassion to others who hurt. If you have suffered, ask God how your experience can be used to help others. End quote. My friends, only sadists like suffering. It is natural not to like it and certainly to avoid suffering. Yet when we cannot avoid suffering, maybe through bodily affliction or our love of the world breaks our hearts when we see such violence and turmoil in the world, if we cannot avoid suffering, we can endure knowing that suffering is transformative and suffering can draw us more closely to the Lord the one who was and is the great suffering servant himself. Amen. Let us now together affirm our faith in the Hear, O Israel. Please join me. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Now, my friends, in peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation. For the peace of the whole world. For the salvation of the whole world. For the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, Andrew, Rosilla, Kevin, Jenny, for all the clergy and people, especially all of our dedicated volunteers at St. Philip's, for them and their families, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Charles the King, for Kate, for the leaders of the nations, for Justin Trudeau, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Unionville Markham, for every city and community, and for those who live in them by faith, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For good weather, for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air. For the sick and the suffering. This day, O Lord, we pray for our friends in need of your healing touch. For Richard and Ricardo and Rose. For Anthony, Keith, Wendy, Karen, Joe, Gabe, Rachel. For Zaki. For prisoners, captives, and all refugees for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, pandemic, and environmental degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, for all who have died, especially John McNally, for each, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, friends, the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit enfold you and all you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday.